Good morning and welcome to our online Sunday service. I'm Alex and this is my wife Rachel and this is our dog Sid. We're so pleased you're able to join us this morning. Today we're going to start with a worship activity to help us to focus on God. Joe Wilkie is going to lead us in connecting to God by allowing him to speak through a random object. Then Dave and Sarah are going to update us with any news from the vineyard community. And then one of our members is going to share with us their experience of being a part of the learning journey that we're on. And then Dave will be sharing as we prepare for 2021, which is just around the corner. And finally, we'll have an opportunity to reflect on what we've heard. After the service, there will be a Zoom call, which is just an opportunity to say hi to others in the church. And then we'll get into smaller breakout rooms. There will be details about this at the end. So why don't we kick off first with some encouragement from the Bible. This reading is from Psalm 40. I waited and waited for God. At last he looked. Finally he listened. He lifted me out of the ditch. Pulled me from deep mud. He stood me up on a solid rock. To make sure I wouldn't slip. He taught me how to sing the latest God song. A praise song to our God. More and more people are seeing this. They enter the mystery, abandoning themselves to God. So let's just pray. God, thank you that you are with us. Help us this morning to worship you and to hear your voice. Amen. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to uh, try something a bit different today. Um, and do some object focused prayer. Um, I find it, I've, I've personally am finding uh, myself quite distracted uh, sometimes and, uh, and I'm trying to pray and other things are coming into my head left, right and centre and, uh, and I'm finding it quite difficult. So um, this is something that I like to do. Um, people who were in the Broadfields Hub have know that we've done this type of thing before and, um, and it was absolutely amazing the way that God spoke to us and he spoke to all of us uh, with the same kind of message that all linked up and it was it was just really powerful so um, I just wonder if um, as a church family we could try this now um, so uh, this is when you just have uh, some some objects that might seem unconnected uh, you haven't got a particular agenda with any of them at all um, and you're just really going to ask God to uh, to speak to you through them and uh, you can also take the opportunity to think of um, a particular person, maybe ask God to give you a, a person to really lay on your heart so that you can try and connect those objects up. So um, I will explain what we're going to do. But first of all, I would like you to go to that kitchen drawer or that shelf or that pot on the windowsill or that place where you put those bits where you just don't really know what to do with them. You know that it's going to be useful because it's the lid for something or other that you can't quite find, but you know you've got it somewhere or it's the batteries that you haven't got around to putting in the recycling, or it's the random light bulb, or, you know, it, everybody's got that drawer. It's usually in the kitchen, um, or I have a bowl in the kitchen, which is full of random stuff, and um, I have what, probably one in every, in every room. Um, but if you could go to that place, and please don't think about what you're picking up, just pick up random items. We're looking for about five items, and literally just, you know, if you've got, a drawer full of clutter just grab a handful um, and if you are like really really tidy um, and then you know you've probably got somewhere where you might just keep some some bits that you're thinking of putting away later okay they don't have to mean anything at all uh, they can be really odd you know you can have a pen lid if you want and if you really need to go to your recycling box um, if you're super super tidy and you really don't have anything so um, uh, we're just gonna play some music for a bit so you've got about two minutes um, so I would just like you to all jump up and go to your random storage place and uh, just bring a selection of items back, um, at least five, and uh, we will meet again in just a moment.
Okay, so you've got your handful of objects. Um, be really good if you could pop them in front of you, either on the floor or on a table. I'm not too sure where you guys are sat. Um, and just give them a bit of space, just a, just a few inches between each object, just so that there's, um, there's a little bit of space around them. And, um, and just now, if you could just have a look and just have a little ponder, just spend a few seconds just looking at each object. Um, and just asking God if there's a particular object that he wants to speak to you through. Um, the chances are your eyes will rest on something for some random reason that you don't understand and just just pick that one up. OK, that's going to be your object. And then in, uh, in, a, in a minute, we're just going to play uh, some music. And I just want you to hold that object in your hand and just ask God what it is that he's got to say to you through that object. Um, and you will probably have some random thoughts come into your head that you may assume, if you're like me, uh, come from yourself as opposed to God. Uh, but just go with it and just see, see what happens, okay? See what kind of message can come out of that. So um, we're just going to play some music and, uh, and then we'll come back together in a moment. I hope that people felt that God was speaking to them through that. Uh, I know it's a bit of an odd exercise, um, but if you did find that you got any words, um, it'd be really amazing if you could put them on Vineyardian so that everybody could see them and we could all get some encouragement. Um, it would be better than the, the chat here today, only because um, people watching it back later uh, then, then wouldn't get to see. So um, that would be really encouraging. Um, it'd be also really interesting to know what objects God spoke to you just to show that he is so much bigger than any randomness uh, that we have um, and also how long you have had that item uh, maybe there is something that's been lurking in the back of a drawer somewhere that you've picked out today that you've had there for a couple of years and you don't ever really know why you kept it and maybe you kept it for today and maybe the whole point of this was just so that God could speak to you through it I think that's really exciting so uh, I, yeah, I just, I hope that, um, that everybody could just put a little comment on there just to um, encourage each other. Um, we're not seeing a lot of each other at the moment or a lot of anybody. So it would be really nice to connect. Uh, so thanks ever so much uh, for bearing with me with that. And, um, and I really hope that you got something out of it. Thank you. Morning, here's some news and a little update for Sunday the 15th of November. 
This week, the Cross Lions team and the Roundabout team have continued to be helping people who are in need. So Cross Lions helps the homeless and vulnerably housed community. Roundabout helps struggling families. So please be praying for them. And I just think, especially also as we go into, or as we're in lockdown 2.0, to be aware of need around us. I think in the first lockdown, it was sunny, it was a novelty. I think there was a great kind of outpouring of community spirit let, you know let's we're all in this together kind of attitude and i wonder if there's a bit of fatigue around that now uh, for for a number of reasons but for us as god's people who are called to be salt and light who also don't need to require on our own uh, like run off our own resources for this that god wants to empower us just to keep our eyes and ears open uh, on a, the facebook groups we're part of or our neighbors or colleagues if there are opportunities to be helped to people at this time so please be praying for that as well mm. every week we are producing videos for in lieu of a normal sunday service and we're on this learning journey we, we feel that we want to think about some very specific things over these three months but we're producing two videos each week yeah so one is a fuller sunday service um, where we will have worship this bit and uh, the talk or what we're calling the learning journey that will engage us on a topic and then the other bit is where we just take just the news and just the talky bit isn't it yeah and put it together and so we've just mentioned this in case uh, there's any confusion because uh, some people are finding the technology confusing and I don't want to I don't want to name any names because I don't want to embarrass Rachel Clark about <laughs> this but um, so like for example last week uh just some people said oh why didn't we do remembrance well we did in the sunday service but we didn't in the learning journey so when you're tuning in on youtube just make sure you choose the one that says the sunday service if you want to watch the sunday service and the the other one is just shorter so it can fit around your kind of if you know if sunday morning isn't a good time for you and there's another time in the week you want to connect with what god's saying to us as a church then you can you can tune into that one and the shorter bit, just the news and the talky learning journey bit, that's available from Friday. Yes. That's right. Whereas the Sunday service, the fuller one, comes out at 10.15ish on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Ready for 10.30. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, it's straight, you know, we're in uh, mid-November now. If you haven't worked this out, you know, there's no no shame attached to that. <laughs> but, um, and also, we're, we've been aware that there are some people who can't access some of the stuff on the internet. So we are starting as well to produce these onto CDs or DVDs for people. We, we think we know the people who would benefit from that. But if you know anyone else who is not able to access what we do through the internet, please get in touch with the office on admin at xe.vin and uh, let us know so we can also get a DVD or CD to them for that. And coming up on the 21st of this month, um, in a couple of weeks' time, is, uh, oh no, about a week's time, is um, the uh, an evening we're going to do a Zoom Elevate and Zoom Launch quiz. And you'll be getting, um, the kids will be getting who sign up, will be getting uh, packs. packs in the post uh, to them. So, so it's important you sign up ahead of time so we can get that in the post for you. So to avoid any cheating, you can see they get these... Um, envelopes with a wax seal so on the call you need to see that the wax seal hasn't been broken yeah. to ensure that happens so you need to register for that because we need to get these things in the post and the deadline for registering is this tuesday tuesday the 17th, 17th. Uh, and for information about the elevate quiz here's adam and hannah hey, hey. so we are having a really exciting elevate quiz on the 21st of November, which is a Saturday. It's going to be at 8 p.m. via Zoom. Be there or be square. We have sent you an email about it, so make sure you respond. Uh, it may have ended up in your junk meal, mail. Most of my emails seem to end up there uh, to people, so please do check that. Uh, but we need you to respond. We're going to be putting some stuff in the post to do with the quiz, so we need you to respond. We also need you to check that your address is up to date on Church Suite if you can handle the technology-ness of doing that uh, so that we get stuff to the right place. And there will be prizes. Points mean prizes. There's going to be some great prizes up for grabs, so do come along. You'll be really missing out if you don't get involved in this. And also, we'd really like to see you there. Parents, 
Your responsibility is make good hot chocolate. There will be a competition for the best hot chocolate made by a parent for the Elevate Age. I think they're also doing this in launch. So, high-end chocolate, catering quality gold leaf, all of that kind of stuff. I want to see it and I want it to be big and fabulous. Think Bake Off, but just a hot chocolate. And that's it. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Bye. Bye. Okay, that sounds like it's going to be lots of fun. Um, in November this month, obviously, we've had to cancel some of the things we wanted to do with the young people and our in-person service. Um, so we're now looking ahead to December. So uh, we've got provisionally booked in December, the weekends of the 5th, 6th and the 19th and the 20th to do activities. So if lockdown ends as is planned on the 2nd of December, it means on the 5th the evening of the 5th, we can do... Uh, we'll do activities for young people again like we did before and then on the Sunday morning of the 6th we will have an in-person uh, Sunday service a chance to be with other people in a room while we access the video Sunday service. And on that date as well just after that service the plan would be to do a parent um, at carer toddler kind of coffee morning sort of thing with restrictions um, as well on that Sunday so we'll be putting everything into that weekend hopefully yes and then we, again we have a provisional booking for the 19th 20th of december uh, to do the same sort of thing so we just recognize it's really important for our young people to be able to uh, build community that's a real high priority for us and similarly though for many of us it's really easy to access um, these services online for some people it's harder and then i think for everybody it's just sometimes good to be in a room with other people and have those connections so the chance to watch service just catch up with people and also pray for one another so those weekends in december provisionally booked 5th 6th 19th 20th but of course a lot of it depends on what the regulations say when we get there yeah so let's end this with a prayer and just um remind ourselves that everything we do is because of god and for god so um if you'll join me loving god you are making us into your bride and your body Help us live in your love and work for your glory. We pray all the things we do would bring fruit for your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hello, good morning. I'm Clive. And I'm Celia. And we've been at Vineyard Church for over 20 years now, but we've been asked to tell you something of our experience during lockdown of where God is leading us and what we believe that is going to happen in the church, both here, here in Exeter and worldwide. So, church for me has always been a regular part of my life, from being a nipper through my teens and with the family until the present day. Suddenly, the rhythm of life has been severely disrupted. But we read in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, from the message, This is the rock on which I will, build my, I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will keep it out. It feels that the gates of hell are pressing close. But as Billy Graham says, God has not left his throne. So where do we go from here? Hubs or small groups must be the answer. A safe place where we can worship together, pray together, be discipled, bear each other's burdens and reach out to a hurting and lonely world. The challenge for me is to be a person of love, hope and compassion in whatever situation I find myself. Celia will be talking about friendships that she has made. But I just want to tell you a very brief story about a young lady who came to this country to go to university. And in her first week, she met another young lady and they became friends. And the lady who, who went to university, sorry, the lady who was, who was at, start again, the lady who was at the university uh, was a real friend to this overseas visitor. To the extent that when they started going to church together, over that bridge of friendship, Jesus walked. I just love that. And I see that as a concept that we should adopt in our church. 
That's as far as I've got, and that's where God is leading me at present. Celia will now carry on. Psalm 111, verse 4 says, The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Lockdown has been stressful and difficult for us all at times. When experiencing a particularly awful day, I was reminded, how much worse is it for people who are living alone? Through the choir I sing in, the bowls club and the voluntary work I do at the hospice supporting the bereaved, I have met some ladies who are either widowed or divorced. God has given me a compassionate heart for these ladies and led me to keep in close touch with them by phone or email during lockdown and meeting face to face when allowed. Some have a Christian faith, others not. I am particularly praying for one lady who has been through an acrimonious divorce which has scarred her and taken away her confidence both in herself and in other people. I've always had a heart for those who are lonely and marginalised and this has become a definite ministry since lockdown. All of these lovely women need a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on and by God's grace I have been able to provide that. In these negative times, we, we have to be the voice of hope and positivity, pointing others towards Jesus. God bless. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. So last week I said no more clipboards. I've gone one further this week. We are in the great outdoors as we think about the next step of our learning journey. This idea that we are in a progression of uh, thinking about the ideas, practices, activities, mindsets, principles that we need to get ready for what we believe God's calling us to do in 2021, which is to start to center our church around small communities instead of the one central Sunday service that we sometimes have. And so uh, today I want to use a Bible verse which is profound in its unremarkability. It's from John 1 and it's verses 37 to 39. And uh, John the Baptist is with some of his disciples and he sees Jesus and he says to his disciples, hey look, there is the Lamb of God. And it says, when John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying and they remained with him for the rest of the day. Now, if you were writing a biography of Jesus, and this is from John's Gospel, John himself says there's too many things to fit in. This seems a weird incident to record. Basically, they had a brief conversation with two disciples and then hung out for a day. Nothing else happens. There's no miracles or anything else, no teaching going on. They just hung out with him. It's kind of weird that it's in the Bible, but it is helpful for us because I think it displays a really important principle around the idea of time, intention and relationships. So what we want to do in 2021 is form these small communities where are places of, of good relationship between people, where people grow in friendships. And the issue sometimes happens, ha the issue we sometimes have is that people think friendships happen by default, that they just are there. In fact, I've even had people in the past turn up to vineyard and spend a little time with us and then be a little bit upset because we haven't somehow provided them with friendships. And of course, it doesn't work like that. Friendships are not something you can just take off the shelf. Friendships are stuff, something that grows and develops. And what we see Jesus doing, and what we need to learn to do, is, we, is that it requires time for that to happen. Jesus just spends the day hanging out with these two guys because he is building relationship with him. And um, 
And I think if we think about sometimes some of the best relationships, some of the best friendships we have, we are going back to places like school or university or maybe our first job, where by the nature of our circumstances, we were forced to spend a lot of time with, with somebody. We were just found ourselves in the vicinity of this person for a long time and we built friendships from that. And now as we kind of move in on our lives and we get busy, and we have other things going on, other things competing for our time, we end up not spending as long with certain people and therefore we don't develop friendships. And this is something we need to recognise, that friendships don't just happen, they are a choice that we enter into. I learnt this kind of by mistake when I went to university. On my second year I was a uh, leader, I led the CU, which was a really small, small Christian union, there's only about 10 or 12 of us. And the new intake had come and I realised I needed to, to make friends with them. Well, I'm not naturally an extrovert, I don't find any of that really easy. So I needed to work out how do I become friends with them and I knew, I found out I needed to spend some time. So what I would do is I would visit them, turn up at their halls of residence or their house and the thing I discovered is if I asked for a cup of tea, I had a reason to spend, you know, five to ten minutes with them. I had something to do with my hands and I had a reason not to go. So if I hit an awkward silence, I still had a reason to be there. And it, it worked fine. It worked really well. I got to know these new guys because I got to spend time with them without an agenda, really, and just got to find out about them and talk to them. Uh, and it was all good until I remember visiting one girl called Nini who made, uh, I did my customary, oh can I have a cup of tea? She made me a cup of tea. I got about two thirds of the way down so that when I lifted it to drink I could see the bottom of the cup and I could see at the bottom of the cup this layer of mould, worse than that, a layer of mould with lines from where it had been scraped by the teaspoon as she stirred in the milk. And so all these kind of scraping bits of mould were in the cup of tea that I had been drinking. I'm sure it did wonders for my immune system. Anyway, uh, I realised you needed to spend time with people in order to grow relationships with people. And this is something we are going to have to think about as we move into 2021. I think a lot of Christian practice, as we understand it in, ch in churches, you know, traditionally has revolved around attendance. You just turn up to something. The important thing is you are in the room. You just go and you are there and then you leave. And it really, you know, sometimes the metrics churches use is about attendance. Some of you who grew up in very traditional churches, it was all about, did you attend? There were three, you know, there were two services on a Sunday and a midweek Bible study. Did you attend them? Did you turn up? Just turning up doesn't develop relationships. Relationships require time and I think no agenda. They just require time together. And so one way I've started thinking about hubs is thinking about that, those events we have when we go and visit family in that week between Christmas and New Year. I, I'm sure you have these where you just go and visit some people and you kind of just hang out and there's no real agenda, there's food, the kids do what they, you know, do their own thing. They get a bit bored and come and moan. I think it is no ro bad thing for kids to get a bit bored nowadays. Um, and you just chitter chatter about stuff and you kind of just pass the time and you catch up and you ask how things are doing. But there's something about the relaxed attitude of that that I think we want to capture. It's almost like because it's that week between Christmas and New Year's, because you've given that time to see family, you know it's going to happen. You don't have this sense of, well, I, there's other things I need to, to be doing. I've, you know, I've not just turned up, ticks the box, now I can go. just need to hang out and enjoy myself. And I think what we want hubs to feel like is a retreat from our daily lives of busyness and agendas and into a place where we can just be around other people and just be ourselves. You see, so much of modern life is about efficiency, productivity, results, outcomes, uh, that we can bring that into our spiritual lives as well and think, well, I, I read the Bible every day if I get something out of it, if I feel it's doing something for me. I'll go to this meeting, I'll go to that meeting if I get something out of it. And I think if we want to develop friendships with other people, we just need to get to the point where we just hang out. Just as Jesus did, come, see where I'm staying, let's hang out, 
for the rest of the day. We need to learn to do that. And it pushes into some of our insecurities. Attending is kind of easy. It's a, it's a tick the box thing. But you know, we're thinking about being secure. A lot of us have had hard times with friendships and it's a place of insecurity for us. And we need to start to trust God that because we're designed, we are made to have friendships, made to have relationships, that he is going to look after us in that situation. We need to trust God that when we are not seeing a productivity or an outcome, that there is still, he is still doing good things at all time. And we need to trust our time. You know, it's so easy to just think, I've got so much to do and so little time. We need to ask questions around that, but also trust that God can make our time efficient, that he has given us enough time to live the life he's called us to live. And relationships are really important investment of our time. And I think investment is a good word. You know, you invest, if you invest financially, it's long term. At times it might seem that your investments are not doing well. So at times it doesn't feel like you're getting any return for that investment. But when you do get return, it's really uh, significant and it makes all the difference. And I think we need to think about our time as something we can invest and one of the main ways we want to invest it is in relationships. And that's what hubs are going to be about. So two verses to reflect on in a minute. The first one is from Ephesians 2. Uh, Ephesians 4, sorry, 2 to 3. It says this, always be humble and gentle. These are relational words. It's about dealing with other people, being humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Do you know what patience requires? Time. We have to be patient because we want things to be quicker. Being patient is accepting that things take longer. Be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. You know, we travel for, for hours across country to spend half a day with extended family because we have that bond of blood with them. There are cousins, there are aunts, uncles, whatever. We spend time, it's a retreat from our daily life. We build relationships there. The Bible tells us that the bond we have with each other because we are in God's family is really significant. In fact, far more significant. And we should want to invest time in that. And the other verse to think about is Hebrews 10, 25. It says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You know, meetings are important. Hanging out with each other, spending time with each other is really important. It's so tempting to neglect it because there are other things we can do, but we spend time and we encourage one another. This isn't about one person standing at the front encouraging everybody else. We encourage one another as we meet. So let me pray. Father, I pray that you would speak to us about who we are spending time with, how intentional we're being, how much we're investing in other people in our relationships. I pray you'd show us where we've said no to opportunities to spend time with people and what you would really have, where we've prioritised our busyness or productivity or outcomes. And I pray, Father, we would feel released or, or just trust you more with our insecurities around making relationships so that as we move forward, we would start to gradually, imperceptibly make deeper, deeper relationships with other people. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're now going to have a moment to reflect on this theme and ask God to speak to us. So let's try to be still and open to what God might want to say to us. Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak to us now. Allow our hearts to be open and our ears ready to listen to what you have for us.
you so much for joining us today. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, then we'll be about to start the Zoom call and the details for that will come up on the screen in a moment, as will the details for the 30 minute learning journey discussion on Zoom, which is happening on Wednesday. Um, we hope that you have a great week. If you need anything, please contact us at hello at exe.vin. Otherwise, be blessed and be a blessing to others. Bye. Bye. Tiffy wave bye.